Grief Cargo's like, bring me my soup. Basically everything but the junk. What, I don't know, what's the, what's the good tactic here? Make sure you're evacuated before you begin your shift. Previously on The Mandalorian, Season 3, Episode 6. Mandalore is good to reclaim. bo and Din are ready to lead all the other Mandalorians down to the planet to recapture it for the goodness of Mandalore. bo has the Darksaber and the loyalty, lo loyalty of the Mandalorians, both her, her uh, I guess, formerly pirate crew, and then also now the children of the Watch. A Moff Gideon is on the loose. He's somewhere out in the galaxy. We don't know where he is yet. And so is Elia Kane. Elia Kane is somewhere in the shadows of Coruscant. What would you think about this episode? Uh, episode 7, I give it a 5 out of 10. Okay. I really liked that they were going to go to, uh, they being the Mandalorians, under Bo-Katan's leadership to go take Mandalore. I really liked the introduction of the First Order Empire Moff Gideon people. Not sure exactly how they're organized. The execution didn't feel so good. Uh, the battles were kind of lame and cheesy. Um, and it still feels like setup. Like we're still setting up for the big reveal maybe next time. So five out of 10. I thought it could have been better. What'd you think? I was generous. I gave him a two out of 10. Whoa. Two out of 10 because the episode was super cool, super cute, but also super frustrating. So Mandalorians, Man Mandalorians going to war, super cool. Um, finding an Imperial base inside a Mandalore, like also super cool. Uh, but super frustrating was Paz Vizsla, he didn't have to die. He didn't have to die and orphan his kid. Uh, and then also the Mandalorians have the battle situational awareness of kids. Like it, Mandalorians are super cool, super badass. These awesome warriors um, across, known across the galaxy. But we see them fighting, and their tactics are pretty terrible. Um, for that reason, I, I got to knock down the score pretty harshly because the show is called The Mandalorian. Like, these people need to be badasses. Um, but they, they did feel untrained. Right. Like, I'm getting the feeling that their armor is what sets them apart from the rest of the galaxy. Not of their, their battle skills, their battle experience. It's just they happen to be wearing good stuff. I want them to be battle hardened as in and like tough and clever and like I've seen something like this before, let's attack like this, or when the situation is changing, they're like roll with it and, and, and figure something out. Um, but they feel like kinda dumb but with good armor. So for that reason I I've I got a ding. But, but yeah. super cool I, ideas. I, I, but And I know you're much more into the Mandalorian lore and storylines, so I get it. Right. I understand. Like reading the books, they do all these cool stuff, but like mm -hmm. not translating. But still, I still I'm still gonna enjoy it. But man, mm -hmm. make the Mandos look cool. Well, should we get into the episode? Even if Let's it is a it. two out of ten. <laughs> 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 all right, here we go. So this is the opening scene. Uh, we'll wait for this to load up here. Yeah, there we go. And it's like the bowels of a random spot in Coruscant. Pretty cool cyberpunk feel. You got like the, you know, the the neon lights and the the canyons of buildings. Very cool. I love these. Some more shots here. Yeah, more canyons. Very Blade Runner. Very cool. It's like the undercity almost. Not like the deep, deep yeah. undercity, but like not the affluent skyscraper stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then here's Elia Kane going down her actually fairly clean alley but it's still very cyberpunky very cool true yeah very cool so yeah we see we're introduced to the city and then we see elia kane go into this alley and she meets up with a probe droid and yeah she has this meeting with gideon let's check it out report sir i'm afraid the pirates have run into trouble on navarro didn't you suggest that the new republic would not be sending support Magistrate Cargo was aided by Mandalorians, according to the reports received by the New Republic. Bo-Katan Kryze led a squadron of Mandalorians alongside Din Djarin. Those two factions are sworn enemies. Continue with your mission. I shall deal with our Mandalorian friends. So my question was, why is Navarro so important? It's just a pretty small settlement out on the rim, which is this huge region on the outer rim of the galaxy. What's the deal? Do you know? Right. I, th I think in a previous episode, they said that it's like kind of in the middle of stuff. Like it's not on the outside. It's not in the middle. It's nearby some trading location. Like it's like a, like a just convenient place. 
but yeah, the planet itself doesn't have any resources. Do you think it's just a nice spot? I mean, I'm not seeing these big like shipyards or docking ports or anything, space stations. I'm not seeing any kind of point. infrastructure that makes it important. I mean, that's got to be built up over time. I feel like there's right. less painful, painful alternates to the Navarro planet. So, but it's important. <laughs> Man, that probe droid though, that probe droid, when I was a kid, I got like reoccurring nightmares of that probe droid. Yeah, can we go look at it? Let's go look at it. Where is it? There it yeah, is. Yeah, imagine that thing being your dentist. Just just floating <laughs> down from above and just all these claws and shit, but like, ooh. Mm. At the same time, you know, automation, maybe in the future, they actually mm -hmm. do look like that. Are Imperial Pro droids, uh, are they like maintenance? droids that have been repurposed because look at the is that like, like a wrench maybe a saw some cal you know like some that's right grabbers what's going because on here we've only seen them like float in and like observe stuff but if you're going to float in and observe stuff you don't need all these little army guys that's right why do you have all these armatures for gra grabbing mm -hmm. things and moving things around and manipulating they look like maintainers to me interesting yeah repurposed repurposed and then they get a red light to show <laughs> that they're evil <laughs> that's true. <laughs> I mean, that is consistent with no, no, no. The Empire had Imperial probe droids when they were big and badass. It's not like the First Order, who's like shoestring right now, and they're just sending maintainer droids out there to do spying. No, this is a holdover from the Imperial era. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Hmm. Interesting design. Mm -hmm. Suspicious. Mm -hmm. Sus suspicious. Maybe they were built like maintain maintainer droids, so that way when mm -hmm. they they could have them like mass produced and out around the galaxy and nobody would expect expect it, and then bam, suddenly we're evil and then now they're repurposed. Maybe let's look at it. Imperial probe Maybe. droids. Let's see if they have beginnings as maintenance. Let's take a look. Or are they? What is this crap? Oh no, that was good. Specifically good. designed for deep space exploration and reconnaissance. On the right, there is now. Yeah, give me, zoom. give me a little zoom, zoom please. Yeah. A little zoom. Yeah. Okay, here we go. Specially designed for deep space exploration and reconnaissance, probe droids are employed in science and military operations. Tenacious hunters and searchers, probe droids or probots, have a variety probots. of sensors, and the ones employed by the Empire are armed with powerful blasters and, in some models, shields. Upon arrival at their target location, they gather information. If confronted. After their main mission has been completed, these droids can self-destruct. Imperial probes are vaguely arachnid in shape with dark metal finish, bulbous sensor eyes, and spindly manipulator arms. So I'm guessing the science component mm -hmm. is important. So they're very, it okay. sounds like they're multi-purpose probe droids, so they need armatures to do other things other than just Correct turn on your sensors. Or yeah, sure. Okay, that makes sense. You saw a one okay. size fits all probe for science and military. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, okay. I mean, I guess that is what I would do if I was like a mm -hmm. big org organization. I would standardize my machinery. I mean, I think the bigger you get, the more resources you have, the more specialized you could make things. Mm -hmm. And but you the get more a base shoestring. Model. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I was thinking, the more okay. shoestring you are, the more you're repurposing maintenance droids for recon Ooh. and, re you know, because you don't have the. R&D facilities and engineering facilities. Hmm. Interesting. Oh yeah, after the conversation we see um, Moff Gideon go through his, I don't know, shoestring imperial base. Um, yeah, here we go. Does this remind you of anything? So red shields that open up and possibly close behind him. What does that look like to me? Looks like this. Woo, memories, nostalgia. Mem <laughs> bump, bump, bump. So I didn't Obi-Wan use a force sprint there. And that was like, would have been a good time. <laughs> good point. All right, Obi. Maybe he didn't know they were going to close. Oh, but as soon as they start to close again, he should have force sprinted. Mm. Anyway, what is the purpose of these red open closey deals on a timer as well? 
Does this give us any insight into this? What is Moff Gideon using them for here? It's a sort of man trap. Yeah. Yeah. So it's like it's like airlocking, but for people. And mm -hmm. so like if someone wants to enter in, they have to deal with two guards at a time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I believe this is called a man trap. Oh, man trap. Man trap is the official term. Man trap, access control. That's cool. No picture. That's cool. Oh. Let's go here. Yeah, here we go. Man trap. Zoom in on that. See this right here? Go in one door, do security checks, and then go through the second door. Hmm. Okay, just so, like in the clean room, I have to go through this room when they're like, you have to like press buttons on one side at a time, there's an air wash, and you like, they do that so that way you have to get, there's like a directed flow. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I think it's the same, well, air lock is so vacuum doesn't go in. Right. And then a man trap is so security threats can get locked in. Mm hmm mm hmm so maybe it's in a, it's a, these red barriers are sophisticated man trap. Can you imagine being one of these troopers? <laughs> it's gotta be like the worst job. Like you just stand there next to these kind of cliffs and then also laser beams, like laser walls. <laughs> what if you got, what if you got to go to the bathroom? You're like, like that fourth person down the line. They're like, uh, can everybody else take down their barriers? I need to pee. <laughs> like, 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 you just stand there all day. Like, uh. <laughs> <laughs> this is a super, super shitty job. Yeah, well, I guess it's like, you know, make sure you're evacuated before you begin your shift. Yep. Or maybe they wear diapers. Little tubes. Cool. Like like old school astronauts. Yep. Yeah, old school astronauts, exactly right. <laughs> it's all about the mission. <laughs> <laughs> What's the mission? Standing, Standing around a multi-layered man trap for eight hours at a time. Like, so who boring. walks in here? Only Moff Gideon. <laughs> <laughs> we take bets on when he's going to come in. I've never won. I've never I won. I hate my job. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, cool little homage to episode one. Absolutely. Super cool. Yeah. Oh, so after he goes through the sophisticated man traps, mm -hmm. Moff Gideon mm -hmm. ends up at the council chambers for the, what do you call it? The shadow council? Shadow council. This, this is a, for those of you who like 90s sci-fi, Reminded me of the Grey Council from Babylon oh. 5. Very similar. I mean, oh my gosh. Mm. Here's Sinclair in the middle of the Grey Council. Here's Moff Gideon, and he will end up in the middle of the Grey Council. Mm -hmm. Very similar. Mm -hmm. Pretty cool. Okay, so wait, 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 wait. Go, go back, go back. Mm -hmm. So this, so I, I used to do some research in holography, and this mm -hmm. scene confused the heck out of me. Because okay. like, here he is standing on the outside of the ring. And so you mm -hmm. could have a camera in the middle of the room or against mm -hmm. the wall, mm -hmm. in which case he would be taking his image and sending it out to the other people. And so it's just like here as Moff, you see his face. But when he walks into the middle of the room, where's the camera? Because shouldn't he then be sending the picture of his back to people? Like, like he spins around. Like, is this room, is he the head person of the Shadow Council? Because like, he gets everyone to stand around him. Like, I think are, that's they, right. uh, are they on their planets looking at his back sometimes? I mean, I would hope the configuration they're in is the configuration they see when they're doing this hollow call. Mm -hmm. So, for example, this dude, when he looks through his eyes at his display, he sees this room configuration. It would be weird, wouldn't it, if this guy were in his, the middle of his room and he was surrounded by the others. Because then but people would be like, wait, wait, which way am I If they're looking? all supposed to be equals, which they are at this point, then yeah, but nobody should have a special room. But Moff Gideon is more equal That's right. than the others. Okay, good point. <laughs> <laughs> it's like the, the uh, ancient uh, Roman emperor. He was a first among equals. Which is the same thing as not being equal, but being equal. No, it's equal. Just the first one. Just the first one. Yeah. Yeah, interesting. I wonder what it looked like through this person's eyes and this person's eyes. Right. Mm -hmm. Does everybody think they're the most important person? <laughs> well, it is the dark side, so probably. Mm. So they're having this conversation. 
in the Great Council, I mean Shadow Council chambers, and then they introduce Thrawn. Captain Pelion, you always speak with much authority. Grand Admiral Thrawn is missing. Any word on when he will be able to participate? Our one hope for success relies upon the secrecy of his return. Secrets are my stock in trade, and never a word of Thrawn. Perhaps it's time we look to new leadership. Yeah, yeah. So in the Timothy Zahn books, Thrawn is like the general, like the super genius general who takes over the remnants of the empire and is a big threat to the new republic. And they mention him here, but he's out in the shadows and Gideon hates him, which makes sense because Gideon wants the power. So I wonder how this is going to play out till we get to the first order. Are we going to have Gideon and Thrawn battle each other out and basically destroy each other? And who's the leader of the first order politically? Is it Hux? I thought Hux, so I, I thought Hux is like the, yeah, I guess he's the leader of the first order and he works underneath Kylo Ren, or I guess a side next to him underneath Sidious effectively. No, no, Snoke, underneath Snoke. So it's really Snoke waiting in the shadows, waiting for Gideon and, and Thrawn to destroy each other. And then he pops in with his new apprentice and hires Hux. I think so. Okay. Interesting. So. That means Thrawn is going to have a very short-lived time in the Star Wars universe. Right. Mm. We'll see where this goes. Mm. 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 Oh, yeah. Also, oh, this in, this, <laughs> in this meeting, they're squabbling about resources. Here we go. We individually great and claw resources, while you and Peleon amass countless resources which should be shared. We already received your request. Three Praetorian guards and reinforcements for your TIE interceptor squadron. And bombers. I love that. And bombers. Just a little correction there. Oh, yeah. I mean, I mean You're <laughs> Gideon's complaining about not getting resources, mm -hmm. but they do deliver. They, yeah, they do deliver, yeah. Mm -hmm. But I guess Gideon thinks he can use them most wisely, so he's justified in his request. I mean, I guess he was he was also trying to sow he was trying to sow dissent. He's saying those Absolutely. guys over there are hoarding, and everybody else is resource constrained. So what the f, bro? What the heck? They are getting rich. Yeah. Dirty. Yeah, we'll see how this. We'll see how this plays out, and how this how Thrawn enters into this. Although we'll see later that when they say resource constrained, I mean they've got fighters and, and construction and they got secret bases. People, <laughs> secret bases. I mean, they have they a have bunch of people. They have a bunch of people working for them, even if they're clones. You got to feed them. You got to. You got to. You got to make that best car. Yeah, they're doing quite well. I mean, I guess they they do have galactic ambitions. So oh, that's a good point. And they're used to being a galactic empire, so everything feels poor mm -hmm. compared to that. That's right, yeah. So in the modern world, we have the U.S. Navy has, what, 13 supercarriers? I mean, it feels, feels like a tremendous amount of resources, but if you have galactic ambitions, oh yeah, I mean, yeah. that's nothing. I guess so. it's, like, it's like saying, like, oh, I'm super poor, I got a Mercedes. Well, I'm stepping down from a Learjet. <laughs> okay, I get it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. Okay, here the Mandalorians are taking off from Novaro. Novaro. And no, are they? What planet are they in? Whatever. The Mandalorians are taking the off. The, the Mandalorians are taking off and, and so oh no, they're landing. They're landing over Navarro and and um and we see that they're like they have the Mandalorian um mythosaur painted on the bottom. What I thought about this was like they spent a lot of money on paint. <laughs> <laughs> if you've ever tried to paint a house, even a small house, like it's expensive. Like even if you do the labor yourself, like just just the sheer dollars in terms of paint. And this giant, this giant mythosaur, like Mandalorians, they spend a lot of money on painting their ship. That's very true. Because when they when they make camp, it's like tents and fires and like rickety benches. Mm -hmm. And then here they're making sure that their imperial ship is painted painted i guess they they got the droids to do it do they have droids do they i didn't have droids? I, i've only seen bo katan have a droid but i don't i see even, no other reason why they wouldn't have droids 
even if they had droids, what a waste of droid resources on painting the ship. That's right. I but what? I I figured that they did it because they're all like gung ho do themselves. I didn't see a single scissor. Wait, can we look up scissor lift? Looking it up, scissor lift. At their base, I didn't mm. see a single mm. scissor lift, which means they're not standing mm. and painting. They're jetpack hovering and, and painting. What a waste of fuel. Mandos, come on. So the question is, what is the fuel in their jetpacks? Magic. No, I mean, no, they no, actually no, no, ran out of... Fuel. Remember when they were, they were chasing right. the dragon that took that kid and they actually ran out of fuel? So it is mm -hmm, constrained. Mm -hmm. That's right. Get a scissor left. Maybe, come on. Maybe they have a dry dock somewhere that they were able to use. I guess maybe, 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 yeah, maybe they docked at some point in time and somewhere else they captured this and found a friendly base. Sure, okay. But so even if they had paint. the paint, even if they had the paint on hand at the dry dock and they had the dry dock, they didn't need to defend it and they had droids to do it, it's still a waste of time, isn't it? That's right. <laughs> oh, okay, 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 okay. I, I got it. I got it. Okay. So, so when they were at that planet, that um, uh, something fifteen. What was that planet? The planet that was like Plazir fifteen. Plazir fifteen. Okay, they had a lot of downtime, right? Because they were just hired to protect it. So maybe they painted it then, because then it's not a waste of time. And maybe this is not paint. This is blood. Ooh. No. Ooh. I did not see any type of small animals around the base. Maybe they just but, harvested some blood. But blood is going to like rot and chip off and get nasty. There's no way it's going to adhere to a metal surface well and cleanly. Isn't that all the more intimidating? Maybe they did a little micro sandblasting. Did a little give the surface a little texture, a little texture so that the blood can grab on. It's still going to it's still going to rot. It's a biological thing and flake off. Yeah. And you, then yeah. you're going to get this like nasty blood stain on your ship. Yeah. That Don't mess with us. Amorphous. That's right, baby. I'm a Mando. I mean, okay. 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 I wonder how it deals with reentry when it gets. I guess they go down slowly enough. It's fine. Then they're not. Yeah, they're not yeah, like they have. Humans. Yeah, they have repulsor technology. True. So let's push the gas out of the way. Okay, I'm okay so, with that. Okay. 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 Oh, this. So this is still on Navarro. This is the door in freaking uh, Grief Karga's office. I mean, the trip hazard risk here. Risk of work. Just not worth it. What are I you mean, doing? it's like a 60-40 ratio between <laughs> opening and trip. That's right. That's right. Do not mess this up. Oh, my That's gosh. Right. And People then on the Navarro door... are trained to always look at, the, look yeah. at their feet when they're walking around. <laughs> Yeah, that's right. And this door panel, why is it so complicated? Is it what which one is open and close? I mean, what are huh. they doing? Hmm. Hmm. Oh my god. So you got to navigate this panel, which like <laughs> what the? And then you walk you, you walk when you finally figure out how to open it. Trip over this thing. That's right. <laughs> oh, right, cuz you, you to push the buttons, you got you have to be within arm's reach, which also puts mm -hmm. your feet in reach of this this little 45 degree angle here. <laughs> mm -hmm. I mean, I mean, if if the metal button panel was like on the on the on the archway on top, like you could slap it and walk through the middle, that'd be pretty mm -hmm. slick. But here it is, like you have to be next to the trip hazard in order to open the door. Mm -hmm. At least it's not a slip hazard. They got little grippy boys here. Oh, okay, 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 okay. So if you do step on it, you twist an ankle instead of slide off. Imagine if you're carrying these containers. <laughs> Imagine okay. if you're carrying these containers, these boxes here on the doors. And like you're like, I'm in the middle of the doorway. This is gonna be fine. Mm -hmm. I'm carrying these suitcases and I dunk just hit this corner here. Yep. Is this a kitchen? That looks like a kitchen. Maybe a kitchen. So they got some boiling water over here. Oh. Don't go through the door with a pot of boiling water. That's right. Grief cargo's like, bring me my soup. And then soap. <laughs> and then the boiling soup ends up all over your face because you tripped on the hazardous door. I guess that's the droid's problem. <laughs> it's true. That's right. Hey, they're an exploited class. Mm. No problem. Not a problem. Yes, what? Yes, Here we what? Go. Yes, what? Yes, 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 yes. 
Super cute. Super <laughs> cute. Oh my gosh. This is like he he's he's piloting a little personalized battle mech. Mm -hmm. But um that's a corpse, right? Like he's piloting a corpse. I mean it is a droid corpse, so therefore it's okay. But droids in this in the Star Wars universe are sentient. Like he's By hollowed sentient? out a being's light a being's body and he's like, I'm gonna control it like a toy. So by sentient, you mean exploitable. I mean, yeah. Exactly. This is super cute, but messed up. Super mm -hmm. messed up. He's piloting a corpse. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it was an evil corpse, but it's still an android. It's still a like, person. And certainly in, I remember in the old Republic video game, there was whole storylines about the droids being exploited on old Coruscant. So the droids have feelings and... They're like actual sentient people in the universe. So this is actually quite heinous. That being said, that's, that's totally within the realm of Grogu. Like he's totally fine eating the amphibious creatures, like mm -hmm. kids. He's totally fine eating, just murdering stuff. Not a problem. Mm -hmm. Grogu is a, he's a savage. Savage, yeah. Absolute savage. Should he be a Jedi? Yes, he's cute. Yep, I'm, a, I'm done. I'm on board. Baby Yoda. Child labor. Let's take a look. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Stop. Grogu. No. You have to pay for those. This isn't working for me. I mean, I get that that Din is like Grogu's dad, and he's like trying to teach him what to write, and Grogu like doesn't have any money, but shouldn't he? Like, like, right, right? It says, because... Din was a bounty hunter, or I guess is, was a bounty hunter, and Grogu helped him to get bounties. And so Din took all the money, and he's like, Grogu, you don't get Ooh. any money for you to buy snacks. But isn't that slavery? Isn't that, and, and, and even worse, Grogu's a kid. Isn't that child abuse? Like, isn't that child labor? Like, Din says, this isn't working for me, with the implication that Grogu does work for him. Like, no, 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 no. Grogu's a whole little person. Give him, give him, give him an allowance. Give him an allowance. You can get whatever snacks you want. Teach him about money. Yeah, I mean, I didn't think about that, but absolutely. Right. Especially since Grogu has helped him so many times in his past. He should get some spending money. And he's not like, he's a kid, according to the Yoda species lifespan. But he's still like 50 years old. He's got some experience. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. He should definitely have an allowance. Yep. I mean, at least. I mean, mm -hmm. it, it, he should he should properly get like a cut. Just here's your cut of the bounty that we've gotten, and thanks for saving my life several mm -hmm. times, Grogu. But you know, at least give him an allowance. Let him get some snacks. I love how the 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 merchant is like this evil droid with a force sensitive Yoda species inside, and a Mandalorian are fucking up my stand what am i supposed to do <laughs> yeah i mean honestly just walk away <laughs> like what, what are you doing dude <laughs> that you see this like child looking baby guy riding around with a hollowed out corpse like mm -hmm. he has no problems messing you up too mm -hmm. that's right Grogu's super cute though just jump 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 super, jump, super jump, cute jump, jump. It's so cute there he is there's our merchant yeah dude Bo's speech. So they're on they're on uh, uh, Navarro, and Bo's like, "We're gonna go together to Mandalore and retake it with our 150 people or whatever it is." Let's check it out. It is time to retake our homeworld. There are still dangers. Dormant species have been awakened. The remaining magnetic interference has made it impossible to scan the surface from above atmosphere. We send down a small recon party, scout the surface, and establish a safe perimeter. Only then will we bring down the others. So the tactics are, well, first off, there are large creatures that are that have lain, been lain dormant for a long time that have been awakened by the bombarding. Okay, so that's, a, that's an interesting danger. Also, so it's go to the planet, send a scouting party, establish a perimeter, then sound that send down everyone. Let's see later on if that actually occurs. <laughs> Noth nothing in there was about like surveying the planet, bringing up maps of Mandalore and uh, figuring out what's going on. I mean, yeah, just just orbit. I guess uh, you can't orbit because they said that there there's some electromagnetic interference that you can't see through the clouds. Mm -hmm. But you could still take like Bo-Katan's ship, 
or I mean, there are mm -hmm. like three or four of those similar type of, of uh, transports and just mm -hmm. survey the planet. Just fly around for a little bit. Mm -hmm. Right. See what's up. And if there's Imperial forces, hot forces, pirate forces, who knows what around the planet, then you can come back and reassess. In fact, do they have any like droppable weapons like bombs or heck even just pick up some rocks and drop them, shake up the surface, see what happens. I mean, once you have access to space with those kind of Star Wars engines, you can definitely move rocks from space, That's drop right. them on the planet and really fuck up the surface. Just go grab a little bit of asteroid and you don't have to like drop it from space because that, yeah, that'll drop like a, like a nuclear weapon, but you can just take some chunks of asteroid and then drop them in from, from like, I don't know, airplane height. What is that? 35,000 mm -hmm. feet. And that'll like shake up the ground, but it won't be like a big little explosion. Yeah, so we'll see later on. We think, you know, they get kind of caught out. I'm not sure how good this oh, yeah. plan of, of Bose is. We'll see. Mandos in space. Here we go. Look at all that paint. So much paint. Maintenance requirements on that ship are just enormous. I mean, right. the manpower required not only to crew the ship, but then to have a dry dock maintenance facility somewhere with the know-how and the spare parts and the lubricants. I don't think they have. I, mean, a, I don't think they have a dry dock. I think they're just flying like this is their entire civilization, except for I guess there are random coverts that they don't know about. So I wonder what the maintenance schedule is for something like this. I mean, because there's there's got to be parts turnover, lubricants, supplies, crew. I hope they know how to do that. Or they just found the ship and <laughs> they're just going to run it until it stops. And that's where it stops. Yep. I mean, that could be a strategy if that's all you can do. Isn't that what the, in Firefly, that wasn't what the Reapers did? They just like had ships and they just ran into the ground. And mm -hmm. It was all radiation. They all messed up. And they would steal another one. Something like that. Yeah. So what I thought about this scene was mm -hmm. they're super exposed. Like, like mm -hmm. what? In which in which scenario are Mandalorians most survivable, most dangerous, or alternatively most vulnerable? If they're stuck on a planet, or if they're stuck in a ship, because mm -hmm. if they're planet side, they can spread out and do their Mandalorian hand to hand short range combat. But then they're also stuck on a planet. If they're and they can be attacked from above. If they're in a ship, then they're all gathered on a ship and they could be just the hull breached and then they're all messed up. Mm, yeah, so what, what, I mean, maybe it's a risk they just have to take. In Mandalorian history, did they have fleets of ships? I think so. They must have, because their names were known again around the galaxy. Otherwise, they would be known, like, just on Mandalore. And it's, it wasn't just logistical ships where there's, like, troop transports going from planet to planet. It's actual, oh, like, no. ships that performed battle things, like, like, plasma cannons and blasters and stuff i think so but i don't recall okay because it looks like to me that this ship right here is just being used as a troop transport right now to get the mandalorians from where they are to mandalore and that's it but it's the most battle ready vehicle they have which i think they called it a light cruiser i mm -hmm. think that's what grief cargo said they don't have a dry dock they don't have spare parts they don't have supply chains they don't have refueling stations they don't, don't have maintainers passive. So this is a one-way trip, probably. This is a fly by the seat of their pants. Mm -hmm. Which is where they're at. Mm. That's okay. That's okay, I guess. Logistics. They need a logistics, logistics. officer. Super yeah, important. Tough. Super important. Whew. Jump arrival. Oh, yeah. So actually, right after this scene right here, this is just interesting how the jump drive works. <laughs> So that acceleration, so they're coming in at light speed and then they eat, stop right there, you know, literally on a dime, probably mm -hmm, mm -hmm. a Star Wars dime. Um, so that's another consistent thing. They would have this massive acceleration relative to the ship forward, but somehow the ship is able to generate a field that accelerates everything inside without any damage backward at the exact moment that it's stopping. So it's more data that we've seen for this. I'm okay with that. Just mm -hmm. in the Star Wars universe, there's somehow some type of stability field that makes people not get liquefied. Okay. Mm -hmm. Cool. And somebody somebody in the comments 
uh, on one of our videos said something about repulsor tech. So it could be repulsor tech to help levitate ships, but I guess it could also be repulsor tech inside the ship creating a field that cancels. That's cool. Sure, yeah, plausible. What about this one? Ah, yes, yes. So this is Bo-Katan. She's in her ship with with her drop ship, and in the back there are the Mandalorians. And here in the in the in the cockpit is the armor and Grogu in his um, battle mm -hmm. husk. So mm -hmm. so what I notice is is Grogu sitting at a console. Like this mm -hmm. is the place where you input and read input commands and reads read stuff. I don't know. Mm -hmm. um, does that mean Grogu knows how to do that? Because there are there looks like in the back there and like to either side of the Bo-Katan, there's there are jump seats. I figured that he should be sitting back there, just kind of hanging out. Th this is an excellent point because the armorer and mm -hmm. Bo-Katan need to be focused on flying and manning mm -hmm. their console. Mm -hmm. If they have half a mind over on Grogu, thinking is he pressing a button, right. they're in bad shape. So he needs to be back, strapped in to just hanging know, out one of those, just hanging out in one of those seats where he can't touch anything, and then they can be fully focused. That's a great point. I didn't even think about that. Even if he can read the console, what is he? How does he relay information to them? Mm -hmm. Is he trained up? Can he communicate verbally? He can say yes and no. That's true. So it's a game of twenty questions while they're in combat. <laughs> 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 like, is there a threat? <laughs> yes. Like, is it above? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> Whew. Yeah. All right, downwash. So this is, so Bo is bringing in her troop transport ship and she's landing next to the Mandalorians. I was concerned the downwash from her powerful engines seemed to blast onto the Mandalorian standing there. Let's take a look. Landing zone secure. Look at that downwash. He's standing right there. So based landing on... So based on where he's standing right there, look at the engine angle here, yep. right there. That's blasting that is, heat right on his head. Right on his head. Now maybe after that 50 feet or whatever it is that the air has dissipated and it's not gonna do damage, but those look like powerful engines. Maybe they should land on the outskirts of the group so there's no downwash risk or hazard. Yeah, or even just facing a different direction would have worked. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. <Whew. laughs> They're like, we're going to retake Mandalore. We had an accident. Like half of our team is burnt <laughs> on the ground. Some people got blown away from the jet, from the downwash, and now they like twisted ankles. <laughs> Actually, that is a great question. Beskar is good against blasters and maybe projectiles. Is it good against heat? I have no idea. What's the specific key to Beskar? No idea. Right. Yeah, it would have to be a, a thermal insulator. It's a metal, mm. so that's mm. an indicator that it might be a good thermal conductor. Probably a good thermal conductor, yeah. But not all metals are great thermal conductors, so must not be. Mm. Beskar is pretty good. Pretty good, yeah. It, sure. It's so good that whatever property you needed to have in the moment, it's got it. In fact, it's got it. <laughs> <laughs> Halo drop. Halo drop. This is a high altitude, low opening, but they don't have parachutes. Oh, I thought that was a reference to Halo ODSTs, but I guess they have those little pods. The drop pods? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Going down. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 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 So they drop all together at the same time. Now I don't know if that's good or bad. Can we can we go back to that where they drop all together? Mm -hmm. um, I don't know. Here. Oh wait, wait at the beginning. Okay, we're gonna try again. Yeah. Here so they they leave. Yeah, they leave the ship at the same. Oh, pause. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So is it good or bad for them to leave at the same time? So the bad, I the bad part of that is that they become prone to collisions in the air. Now you got a Mandalorian knocked out falling right um the good part is that that um if there are enemies watching then you get a quick release of all your your para jumpers um the bad part is if the enemy's watching and they know you're going to do it they could shoot you at, at the right timing and then wipe out everyone 
So should they instead drop in a string like like first two, second two, third two, fourth fourth two? What, I don't know. What's the what's the good tactic here? To me, it sounds like take a good twenty seconds and launch them. You get no conflict and no collisions, so you go two at a time. Take twenty seconds to do it. They can all get to their ground positions close enough because they have jetpacks. It's not like parachutes where they're, you know, subject to the wind. True. So you extend the time to avoid collisions during the drop, and then they can all end up where they need to be. That's right. Because there's not like free fall parachutes where you like mm -hmm. you, wherever you land is where you land. Like they have jetpacks. They can they can launch two at a time, spread out, and then come back together mm -hmm. however they need to. Can we go back to the to the inside the ship? Let's go right there. Yeah. So that being said, should they drop front to back or back to front? So I think back to front would be best because then the back ones fall and go away from the plane. The second ones fall and go away from the plane. Whereas if they go front to back, you could get a conflict if there's too short of a delta T between two drops. Hmm. Or yeah, or to avoid the too short of the delta T, you'd have to drop teams farther apart. So like the fastest mm. drop that's not exactly the same time is back to front and that way everyone clears and then they can regroup at the at the bottom mm -hmm. cool so mandalorians maybe they have a reason for this but i didn't like it can mm -hmm. we go to their landing do you want them on the ground like that uh, a little bit further, a little bit further back. Yeah, yeah so they land here they mm -hmm. land in a group which like on one hand you have your firepower concentrated on the other hand, you're all sitting ducks out there. Um, you're all sitting ducks out there and in a tight group. That's not like, like they didn't land behind cover and they didn't mm -hmm. spread out. Like, is, th is this tactically wise to land in a tight group like this? You would think if you land in cover, you could land as a group because you'd jump under cover and you'd be okay. But if you're landing okay. in a smooth open zone with no cover, probably want to spread out so you can each individually find cover as needed as it landing as a group in the middle of a you know an open space like this if there are enemies over here they can just start shooting in your general direction and all right. of a sudden you're in trouble they don't even have to aim because so, you're just in a little cluster yeah. so this is kind of right. the worst way they could have done this they, mm -hmm. they're not undercover they're they're exposed in the open and they're bunched together but they have Beskar. And we got Beskar. It's, you know, it's the best car <laughs> there is. The best car. Indeed. Okay, okay, okay. A little bit further forward. A little bit further forward, please. Okay. Uh, yeah, good, good. Okay, okay. Mm -hmm. A little bit, little bit further back, 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 back. A little bit more. Okay, here it is. They they land. They cushion their, their drop with their legs. They are now pulling out their weapons. I guess okay, a little bit further back. This guy on the left, he already has his gun out. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, perfect. Play from here. Their weapons are all holstered. They're now pulling them out. Mm -hmm. Look at that guy in the rifle. He just pulled it out. So that means that they dropped in in this middle of this exposed, slippery surface, mm -hmm. no cover. Weapons were not ready. They weren't ready to fight. Mm -hmm. They could have dropped in and then immediately had troopers just blasting them from the sides. Yeah, and I was also noticing, now that you mentioned this, uh, does everybody have a zone that they're responsible for shooting? and call, creating cover because like these two guys or three guys in the middle here they're gonna have to shoot past people in the chaos of battle that's to right get is the, anybody so looking are, backwards maybe behind behind these this these person's foot back here maybe is looking yeah but look at look at look at that guy's foot he's not looking backwards he's looking forwards yeah, may, maybe that person right there maybe but these three people in the middle are impotent they can't do anything because yep. they can't shoot past their people. That'd be friendly fire. That's too risky. Yep. So. So the Mandalorians dropped in a group, assuming that the threat would be in the forward direction. But then if they're in the forward direction, only really these three people can shoot in the forward direction. That's right. Everyone else is everyone else has their line of sight obstructed. Obstructed. And they can't shoot past their friends because they're going to hit them. All right. They could do some type of like reach over the shoulder, but now they're clustered and it's an easy target. But if they do friendly fire in the back, they do have Beskar on. They do have Beskar on. That's a good point. So no problem. It is not a problem. I mean, 
Actually, tactically, maybe it's just like shoot your friends. They all have Beskar. Who cares? Doesn't matter. Just get bullets out. Just, just get bullets just get, out. Just get lasers out. Yeah. <laughs> lasers out. Lasers out. Lasers out. I don't care if you hit lasers me. Out. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> you look, you, if you look at their armors, there's actually like tons of damage on their, on their backs and it's all friendly <laughs> fire. <laughs> but hey, it's Beskar. Mm. What is, this is, what is this? This is also, so this is when they are, when bo and, and group, they're encountering the Mandalorians that were on like the wooden ship, little like the, mm -hmm. the, the, the land ship. And they're like taking cover, but they're they're still just standing in the open. <laughs> <laughs> okay, maybe this guy over here, he's behind some cover. Maybe this guy. Mm -hmm. He's like flanking Sh left, walks over ten feet. <laughs> Wait, why is this is Bo Katan, right? Oh no, no this no, is the armor. Bo, Bo Katan standing up in the oh, middle. Is, oh, oh, that is Bo Katan. It's similar. The one oh. on the right. That's the um. This that's the mercenary. Yeah. Mercenary. The the woman mercenary, the lady. Uh, no, just standing. They're just in the open. Like, get covered. So, kneels down. <laughs> so the leader of the entire Mandalorians is here, and the super important armorer. The only armorer here. there is. Yep. If these two guys get taken out, the whole show is over. That culture is gone. So how about we put Bo and the armorer behind here, and we bring these two guys out, stand in the open as fodder. Mm-hmm. 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 In fact, Pokatan shouldn't be talking to the the unknown people. It should be like Paz Paz, Paz, Paz Vizla talking mm -hmm. on behalf of Bo. That's right. Because Bo needs Bo gives commands. There's a second person communicating commands, and also another person executing the commands. Mm -hmm. If she's doing the communication herself, she can't command and communicate at the same time. And also, she loses situational awareness because she's like interacting with someone. Mm -hmm. Mandalorians, like the good part is that they got that Beskar. They got Beskar. Yeah, all right. I mean, someone shoots her, she's all right. She's all right. Yeah, they just take the hit. Yep. How is Beskar against explosions? So somebody threw a thermal detonator in here. And a I just got Beskar. I suspect that the Beskar will absorb the impact from the shrapnel. No problem. I worry about like Bokotan's elbows and her legs i guess her thighs there like that's just cloth i think is it beskar male or maybe it's like it's like kevlar beskar it's <laughs> like woven <laughs> beskar fabric okay 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 yeah okay yeah, okay. yeah. in which case she's entirely covered mm -hmm. entirely I'm covered. done with that yeah even this uh animal wolf skin here it's beskar actually beskar aramid fibers mm-hmm they bred wolves Wolven for Beskar. thousands of years and fed them Beskar until they, right. the DNA and evolution occurred so that the Beskar would be in the hair. Mm. They found one wolf that had super regenerative power and they injected it with, with Beskar. And so it's just like, whooshink, and it pulls out this Beskar claws. But, but mm -hmm. when it made it and had kids, they also inherited that DNA. And so now mm -hmm. they have Beskar wolves. And that is the origin of those crystal wolves on that one planet in episode eight. Oh, the lore is coming together. That's it. I like it. So my question about this was, first off, are they allowed to kill each other? Or is this like wolves fighting for alpha status or whatever it's called? I I mean, I want to say that they're fighting for like hierarchy, alpha status stuff, but they're fighting with like live weapons. They're not fighting with like practice weapons. That's a lot of restraint. Yeah. And helmets off. And well, one of them. That's true. That's unfair. And then That's if it unfair. is to the death, why fight fair? Why are there rules? Like, oh, we can only use melee weapons. We can only use fibro, fibro knives. Why can't I yeah. just shoot you in your sleep? Like, head why on a swivel, bro. Why can't I just bro? roll out a thermal detonator right here on the deck? Right? Yeah. So there, there are some rules, but it's a fight to the death. It's kind of strange to me. I don't know what's going on. This Mando culture. Mm-hmm. 
Also, I love this crawl away. He looks like a little spider. Oh, no, they're not here, not here. Where is it? There it is, there it oh, is. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Crawl away. Crawl away. Crawl away. No, he, he <laughs> is scrappy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, rockets are fair game. Vibro knives are fair game. fair game. Helmets on is fair game, and yet Wolves doesn't have his helmet on. They never shot rockets. Oh, sorry, I meant jetpack. Jetpack, like, he's, he's, he's going to run out of fuel. Mm-hmm. That's right. Wasting supplies of fuel on That's political right. games. Dum dum dum. Oh, okay. Yeah, I don't have much more to say about that. There we go. That being said, they do have Beskar on. So they do have Beskar maybe on. Maybe it's okay. So maybe it's okay. Man, Din is so loyal to Bo. Mm -hmm. He gets praises mm -hmm. for so much here. Is he okay? There's too much animosity. And this blade is all I have to unify our people. I only know of this weapon what you taught me. To be honest, it means nothing to me or my people, nor does station or bloodline. What means more to me is honor and loyalty and character. These are the reasons I serve you, Lady Kreez. I mean, fuck the Creed. You got honor and character, I'm good to go. I mean, he doesn't like it when bo says that he's in a cult, but the things he just said makes him sound like he's in a cult. Right, and she's like the leader who keeps it all together. Like the holy prophet that like, he's like, I'll follow you no matter what. Like, whoa, whoa there, bud. <laughs> mm -hmm. She can do bad stuff too. Also, I saw an, uh, an opportunity for some uh, manipulation. And what you taught me. I only know of this weapon what you taught me. To be honest, I only know of this weapon what you taught me. Blank slate. Teach him whatever you need him to know. Mm-hmm. It, the person that holds this dark saber gets like ten percent of your income always. Just you know, just saying. Yeah, just what happens. Yeah, and and it gets other things too. You know what I'm saying? Yep. Gets like yep. like they get a rickshaw and you got to carry me around. It's the creed. It's the creed. It's what the are creed. you gonna do? This the creed. is the way. This is the way. Din's in a cult. <laughs> Din's in a cult. In summary, Din's in a cult. But he's, he's a good. Gotten. He done got himself got. This we had a question. We had a question last episode, like who sits in the front of the ship, and we thought it was a navigator. No, it's the commander. The commander sits in the front of the ship, and he has to turn around to talk to people. Does the chair swivel? Nope. He swivels his torso. Good point. I swivel my chair. So in, in the clip in the episode, go check it out. He he has to turn <laughs> his torso around to go talk to his comms officer. That means the fleet commander is always just looking out a window into space. <laughs> like there are people talking behind him. <laughs> right, and he's not commanding space, he's commanding his crew. So what's more important, the window view or the view of his crew on the bridge? I mean, especially in space where like you're looking in front of you, even if you had like a had like a I don't know, hundred and seventy degree angle. But like you're limited and up and down because of where they put their bridge on the ship and you can't mm -hmm. see anything behind you. Like what's the point mm -hmm. of looking forward in space? I guess, what if it was a swivel? So you do one of these. I'm commanding the crew. Yeah, and, all right. And then I come back for the space view. Is that okay if it was a swivel chair? Yeah, in fact, I think that's what the, that alien species that we encountered last episode, where they had that water tank. That water tank, they could mm -hmm. spin around and talk to the crew and spin around to the front, sure. Actually, now that I think about it, if he can swivel in this chair, as soon as he turns around, the crew is looking at him, so he can make eye contact appropriately. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. the fact that it's not a swivel chair is wild. Actually, that's the problem. That's the only problem, that it's not a swivel chair. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I have nothing more to say other than that is a blunder. Blunder. Maybe the Imperials found that swivel chairs would be too squeaky, so they're like, we, we don't want that's that right. in our ship. Why kaiju? Let's find out. So the Mandalorians come down to Mandalore and then there's this random kaiju. So Bo did mention that these threats, species have been raised from dormancy because of the bombardment. So this must be one of the kaijus that have been raised out of dormancy. So there were these giant monster kaijus that were just hanging out on Mandalore, like, like the. So, so they're not like randomly. They're not evolved from radiation. 
that's way too short. The Mandalore has only been unoccupied um, for, you know, like a decade or two. So that means these things were already there. Exactly as you said, they were dormant. That means they were like dormant and chilling out near the surface or, or even or even if they were in the depth. Sure, 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 sure. Like like they were just hanging out. These gigantic monsters were just just hibernating like like the the food required to keep this thing alive. Like this thing needs to be hunting. Like it can't just chill forever. Like Why? Why? Why I is mean, this thing here? I mean, okay, it's alien life in a faraway galaxy. Maybe these life cycles, these things, is a thousand years sleeping, a thousand years up. And that's just okay. the life cycle that they evolved into. And we don't understand why. And maybe if we knew more about Mandalore, it would make sense. I guess kind of like cicadas, how there's like some types of cicadas, they go mm -hmm. underground for like 13 years. And you're like, what are you doing down there? And then mm -hmm. they just all pop up mm -hmm. together. Okay, maybe maybe this thing's like that too. Mm -hmm. Maybe. And not obvious as to why, but I mean, there is the, what is that thing? The creature down in the waters of Mandalore? The Mythosaur. The Mythosaur went missing for a long time. Maybe it went into this long hibernation. Ooh, that's right. So they have these, so Mandalore has these under, underground lakes. So I guess that probably means a cavern. And so maybe these large creatures usually hang out underneath there, just hibernating, waiting, doing their long-term life cycles. I don't know, sure, maybe. And But then the bombardment from the surface shook the ground a lot, and then they're like, what is this? I'm cranky. And so then they came up, and then they ate a bunch of Mandalorians. But then this one in particular, like, it took a nap because, like, you know, the surface is mostly empty. Mm -hmm. That's also okay. consistent with Din and Bo seeing the Mythosaur. This is the reason why it was there, and nobody saw it before. Hmm. And it's awake now because these other guys have been woken up by the bombing. Mm -hmm. by okay. The bombing. There you go. Okay. okay. I'm on board. Okay. I'm on board. Battle with Jetpack Imperials. Okay, so here we go. Here's the battle. Let's uh, let's watch these tactics. Let's watch these tactics. Helmets Jet off. Packs. That's cool. Here they come. Now it's on. Okay. Oh no. They're wearing Beskar. Mandalorians are staying put. Yeah, he's just shooting. They send one messenger, not two. Mm -hmm. Oof. Getting hit. Surrounded. But it's okay. They got Beskar. Melee. See ya. With Close the melee. Line. Oof. Keto. Kick. Down. Punches. Advance. So now they chase them. Naively chase them. Super cool, though. Super cool. Oh, that's so cool. But tactically terrible. Attack, attack, attack. Chase, chase. Bing, bing, bing. Dive, dive shot. Oh, see ya. Uh, and trap. Uh. So let's talk about some of these elements here. <laughs> so yeah. first off, you're in dangerous territory. Helmets off. It's not necessarily you're going to be able to get them back on if it's a surprise attack. Now, luckily, they were able to get them on. Not necessarily always the case these helmets should be on at all times and, and they're in that big cavernous room where they need to see things that are far away like their helmets have the little visor like little scopey attachment mm -hmm. thing mm -hmm. that their eyes don't have like keep your helmet on mm -hmm. also notice the formation Scattered or lack thereof yeah and then look at the the tactical position they got themselves and see if i can find the look at this so it's kind of fuzzy but here they are on this sort of walkway cliff? on the cliff Mm -hmm. They have a, an, an exit over here and an exit over here. They're so exposed. All the Imperials have all this space to just shoot here. Mm -hmm. they, they got don't a, have to do anything. Uh, Mandos got a wall behind their back so they can get shot mm -hmm. from behind. Oh, sorry. They, they, there's no way to exit. Mm -hmm. You can just dunk shot thermal detonators into the... That's right. You know, Even if one comes, dunks off and bounces back down a cliff, you don't care. You just keep sending them until one sticks. I mean, They're heck, really, the stormtroopers... Yeah can just fly above and just drop them from above that's true that's true i thought that as soon as the mandalorians see the the, the jetpack troopers coming in 
they should send like their left wing out so that they can't get surrounded just, just mm -hmm. don't get don't let the other team flank you and i think they should never have been able to they should never have been in this bunch formation to begin with that's right they have radios they have squad jet tactics jetpacks jet split up into two columns one on the right side one on the left side like across the gorge mm -hmm. and heck, you don't they can advance through this thing they, they can be quite far apart mm -hmm. as mm -hmm. squads of two or five so they're not all in one area it's, that's right it's, they have they have radios in their helmet mm -hmm. communicate by, by radio mm -hmm. yeah and then it was funny the the jetpack guys they say oh the jetpack guys have beskar and it's like mm -hmm. we've decided that the tactics of mandalorians is pretty naive and mm -hmm. their real advantage is beskar armor once they encounter an enemy with beskar armor they have no advantage they have no answers it's an even playing ground now yep and the for some wild reason, thing the Imperials come in for the melee kill. There's no melee kills, but what were you going to say? The wild thing about these Beskar armor is that it's not Beskar everywhere. Like, shoot them mm. in the thigh, shoot them in the butt. Like, Let's see if we can get a good show, shot. Oh, that, that, you think the... oh, here we Thank go. You. Oh, perfect, perfect, perfect. So the knee the kneecaps are Beskar, the mm -hmm. outside of the thighs are Beskar, mm -hmm. the forearms, the chest, the helmet, but the like cup. the cup, yeah, it was basically everything but the junk uh, is exposed. <laughs> like, like shoot them in the mm -hmm. butt, shoot them in the inside of the thigh, mm -hmm. shoot them in the knee, shoot mm -hmm. them in the arms, shoot them in the hands, shoot them in the neck. Like, there's so you, many places that aren't Beskar covered. Do you think that the Imperials also have this advanced fabric made out of Beskar that protects them in the same way the Mandalorians have? Or is the, Mand is the Beskar only on the plated sections? So I, ha I, I, I want to say that if the Mandalorians had these Beskar wolves and then the Empire took over the planet, then they would also have captured the Beskar wolves. However, I think that that, that must be just fabric because if they are fully head to toe covered in Beskar, how are the Mandalorians shooting them at all? So I think that means that mm -hmm. the black sections must not be Matt Beskar. Mm -hmm. In which case, right. that means shoot them there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, at least aim there. I mean, they're Mandalorians. They should have the aim to be able to do it on some right. high percentage basis. Right. I mean, they're mm -hmm. super good combat warriors unless their mm -hmm. skills are really just about walking up to people and shooting them. <laughs> and getting taking hits. Uh, 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 but yeah, it's yeah, Beskar, yeah, so yeah, I don't yeah. care. I'm Beskar. I'm cool. <laughs> Then the thing that really bothered me was this naive chase where they run away and they just fall right in the trap. Like, run, 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 run. No formation. Running, 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 gunning. Chase, chase. Even more just, chasing. Just, take, chasing. just absorbing it. Getting spread out. Bunching up. And then the, sp then the trap is sprung. Door down. It's just... Do they, ha do they not have tactical pursuit? Or is it just running and gunning like a video game? <laughs> I mean, it was super badass, super like tough guy, just piercing mm -hmm. through the enemy forces, but like get some leapfrog, get some like cautionary, check the corner mm -hmm. a little bit. Otherwise you get caught out like this. Mm -hmm. so also, this what, is, what is Din doing in the front? Din is like, he's like Grogu, uh -huh. you okay? You gotta keep up, like hang out with Grogu, protect him. Don't get in the front, what are you doing? Yep. He's like, Grogu, keep up. I've got bloodlust. <laughs> I'm like, I'm going to run <laughs> to the front. Yeah, so here's the Imperial Troopers. Mm -hmm. And here's Din. He's the first one to chase. That's unreal. Does Grogu yeah, just have like, a lust. godfather? Like, <laughs> who's going to take care of Grogu? I mean, nobody. Yeah, really because they don't take care of foundlings. Oh. Oh. So super, Bo, super badass though. So Bo's leadership in terms of tactics and strategy seems to be sorely lacking here. So you know, actually, Din is the first person. Bo is the second. Oh yeah. Let's see if we can find a good shot here. Of Bo. Oh, she's, she's up at the front. Oh here. Oh here there she is. is she's right at the front. Here's Din. So, your leader, 
is right up front. And all these other Mandalorians are letting it happen. I mean, there is some type of morale, like, like not more, um, type of morale that is won by having your leader, like, lead the charge. But at the same time, if your leader dies, then your entire movement is gone. It's gone, yeah. It and I guess if this stormtrooper kills Bo, they now have, they now own the Darksaber. <laughs> that's true. That's true. And, you know, enemies, oh, that's true. Because if, if the enemy shoots Bo, they now have the Darksaber, mm -hmm. they now lead the Mandalorians with that ridiculous Darksaber provenance rule of hierarchy. Oh, so that's... she really shouldn't be out in front. Yeah, she should be like the fifth person or something. Close enough even, to make decisions, but far enough back that you're not going to take hits. Even not even in the battle, sometimes. Like your even leadership, you shouldn't, shouldn't always be in the battle. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm. What are you doing, Mandos? So this is a, a little snapshot of the materiel that... Uh, mm -hmm. What's his name? Gideon was able to procure from that one dude. I mean, look at the Imperial supplies. I mean, we've got, I think these are TIE bombers. These are not TIE bombers. These are TIE these fighters. Are interceptors. This, this, interceptors. Inter mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. With well-built base, obviously supplies I mean, down on the bottom for maintenance and resupply. Super cool. I mean, heck, to, to these hang these ships from the ceiling, that's a lot of engineering. Mm -hmm. That's a lot of structural integrity. Yeah. Well done. So they've set up cranes to hold the mm -hmm. TIE bombers. They've got supplies here, you know, inventory people. Yeah, this is uh, organized. Close up of the TIE bomber. Cool. I didn't realize how yeah. big they are. Look at the size of that trooper down there. They're huge, yeah. It's the same shot. So, oh, and then, what is this, TIE interceptor? Mm hmm. Ooh, looks like a bat hanging from the ceiling. Super yeah. Cool. Super cool. So, just the infrastructure they set up, the the cranes, the conveyor belts, the supplies, all of it. Like, holy crap. How are the Mandalorians ever going to match this? Maybe the they should be in charge of the galaxy because they seem to have things running very smoothly, very organized, right. very cleanly. So they may be authoritarian, but at least the running water will be on and food supplies will be there. That's true. Okay, I don't know if I like that. <laughs> Hold the door. Oh, Let's check it out. Pause Vizsla. We're leaving you behind. Go. There are too many. This is the way. Okay. So he locks himself out so that way everybody else can escape. But, and he's like, there are too many of them. So you guys, you just escape on your own. Okay. So I didn't put it in the clip, but he kills all of the troopers. So there aren't too many. There's exactly the right amount. <laughs> And if bo -Katan, if he had let bo -Katan help him out, they could have cleared him out faster and they could have ran away. Um, but also, like, can we go to the where he hits the button? Hi. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like, I've hit, like, the garage door opener and then run underneath the door. Like, <laughs> but he doesn't do that. In fact, in fact, he doesn't even have to run. He could step on the other side of the door and just, just reach his arm around and just slap the panel. And then pull his arm mm -hmm. back in. Now he's on the safe side of the door. Like what? What is what is Paz Vizsla doing? And he's got a kid. He's got a kid that will. That kid used to have a dad. Like he, he's about to orphan his kid. Mm -hmm. And in fact, like, he, like, why didn't he just go to the other side of that hole, in the wall, and guard that hole? Like he doesn't need to block himself out there to die. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just go stand on the other side of the door, post up behind a box or behind a pillar or something, and then shoot the troopers as they walk through this little hole. I mean, it's a great bottleneck zone. So you can exactly. fit right through there and shoot them as the troopers come through. And if they had mm -hmm. explosives, get through the hole, <gasps> set up the explosives, collapse the tunnel, and then you're home free for a good chunk of time. There's no reason to die here. In fact, he would have done a lot more for the Mandalorian cause by staying alive. I don't know why he did this. Um, and I watched this entire episode. I rewatched the entire episode. None of the Mandalorians have any explosives, which is wild to me. Like, like they're all these badass warriors and they only have pistols and knives like they gotta have some type of explosives now now we've seen mandalorians have rockets built into their backpacks so like did none of them have rockets like 
I would think, I mean, just mapping off of like Navy SEAL stuff that like there's got to be one demo expert, one person that's specialty is explosives. Mm, but I guess not. I mean, how powerful are the rockets? I mean, if they don't have an explosive guy, could they just rocket the the enclosure and, and collapse the tunnel or the, right. the rocket's not powerful enough? I guess not. I, I, guess I mean, not. but several of them, maybe blast the ceiling, maybe collapse the rocks mm. and then nobody has to die. Like, why did why did Paz right. Dizla die? He didn't need to die. It's weird uh, Mandalorian bad tactics. Yeah. I mean, I guess I get sacrificing yourself for the good of the cause, and that's how you want to go. But okay. here, I think the better decision is to stay alive. You're important for the team. He's super important. I mean, just, just stand on the inside of the door and then reach around and push the button. Use the old garage door trick. Hit it. I mean, get garage inside. door trick is like is like if the button was over by bo you had to run. Like This is even easier than that. This is just right. like lean over and push the button. Right. Like, yeah. Push button, slide in, be inside, slap the button. Even yeah. though this is a really complicated button thing. I mean, but what, what he does do is he just punches the whole thing. Yeah, he just punches the whole thing and it closes. Oh, there are too many. This is the way. There, and there are too many, but he kills all of them. There are not too He's, many. <laughs> he just stands there with his ridiculous chain gun, plasma gun thing and mm -hmm. just takes them all out. Don't they have Beskar armor as well? How's he surviving and they're not? They don't have the, the armor to make that good stuff. That good, I good. I don't know. And yeah, so Moff Gideon is back. He's restarting the First Order, making power plays. Can take out Thrawn or maybe be taken out by Thrawn. We don't know, but he's back. He's back. He's back. He's back. All in all, the end of the episode, we find that Mandalore is not safe. It is not ready for reclamation. It is occupied by what's going to become the First Order. Paz is a kid. He's an orphan. And is the First Order about to start up? I think this is what we're, we're seeing. Yeah, this is the First Order, I think, starting up. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Cool. Mm -hmm. Cool transition to, to meld it in with the, the, new, the new Star Wars videos. It's too, yeah. Oh, cool transition to, to include into the new Star Wars episodes 7 through 9. All right, catch us next time for the finale. Season finale. <laughs>